In this video series we are building a ground station for a geostationary satellite and try to talk to a guy in Antarctica. This is a bonus series and not directly related to the regular topics of this channel. It is strongly suggested to start watching at the beginning of the playlist, now showing in the top right. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. The last two weeks were rainy and wet here in Switzerland. I have the antenna outside and I did not want to go there with my delicate equipment. That is why I still was not able to transmit a signal and receiving my voice from space. But I was not lazy. I built a 25 MHz filter for the local oscillator. I played dentist and pulled a crystal out of the LNB. It did not hurt. I added the reference signal injection path to the LNB. I assembled the whole station on a wood board, reprogrammed the Adam Pluto to work with a 25 MHz reference and maybe killed one of them. So let's start. If you remember, we need a stable 25 MHz local oscillator signal for the LNB and the SDR receiver needs a stable 40 MHz clock signal. I decided to buy this GPSDO from Leo Botnar because it has two outputs. But this device delivers a square wavish signal, not a sine wave. Because it uses a quartz crystal, the original oscillator in the LNB produces a sine wave. So how can we transform a square wave into a sine? The solution is simple if we look at the spectrum of the square wave. It has harmonics at 50 MHz, 75 MHz and even higher frequencies. If we were able to filter these harmonics, we would have a pure sine wave. But how can we build such a filter? Easy peasy. Google is your best friend and you find, for example, this page. We want a low pass filter which does not hurt all frequencies below 25 MHz but kills everything above it. So low pass, 25 MHz cutoff and 50 ohms on both sides are evident. But the rest? For example, the type? These names sound very exotic. Which one to choose? It does not matter too much for this application, so we choose Butterworth, maybe because of sympathy with our British colleagues, which suffered a lot because of Corona. Order 4, standard values and E12, because I do not want to wind the coils myself. By the way, what is E12? It is a system of preferred numbers for electronic components and consists of 12 values per decade. You immediately recognize it because all our resistors, for example, are numbered like that. There are also E24, E48 and even E96 series available. But already an E24 series of resistors needs a lot of space. This is why I only have an E12 series of SMD capacitors, resistors and inductances. Now we press Compute and get a beautiful drawing of our filter. And also this curve. Relevant for us is S21, which is the attenuation between input and output. It is around 2.5 dB at 25 MHz and 36 dB at 75 MHz. The 50 MHz harmonics anyway was smaller and therefore needs a little less attenuation. With this filter, we should get a decent sine wave. And here is the result. All soldered under the binocular. Connected to the spectrum analyzer, we see a similar curve as simulated. The attenuation at 75 MHz is a little lower than expected, but still OK. And if we insert the filter into the GPSDO signal, we get a nearly pure sine wave. Cool so we should be able to insert it into the LNB. Next I had to take out the crystal and add a possibility to inject the 25 MHz into the LNB. 
I used this twin LNB and desoldered one of its outputs. I found this small network to inject the signal. And I used through hole components because I think it is easier to solder them in place. Ready is the LNB. I hope I can test it next week. The weather forecast is promising. I also found that we can change the reference frequency of the Adam Pluto using this command. Just copy paste. If I choose 25 MHz, I can use a single frequency GPSDO in the future for the LNB and the SDR. The signal produced by the original oscillator in the Pluto is around 2.2 volts and we have to match it more or less using attenuators. And it is somehow square, so we do not need a filter for this path. Now it was time to put all components in place. I used the wood board concept, where I glue the main parts in place and connect them using coax and other cables. I also added a power distribution box for 12 volts. And because this project is closely related to rockets, I thought I add an appropriate main switch. Let's look at the connections and start with the Pluto. The RX path currently is quite simple. Just a bias T which inserts the 12 volts to power the LNB. Maybe later I have to add an attenuator because the signal from the LNB is quite strong. The transmission path goes via the preamplifier to the power amplifier and to the potty antenna. One channel of the GPSDO is connected to the Adam Pluto and the other, via the filter, is connected to the LNB. Unfortunately, my modified Adam Pluto stopped working with SDR console. It is still visible on the computer though. I hope I did not fry one of the chips during my extended experiments. One last thing. Here is the gift of my wife for 200,000 subscribers. It is a Yambic Kier from Begali. A beautiful piece of mechanics in an otherwise electronics lab. Longtime subscribers know that I once was a radio telegrapher for the Red Cross. With age, I found out that Morse is like driving a bicycle. If you were able to do it once on a certain level, you do not lose it. It only gets rusty. Because the keyer does not produce a tone, I had to build this beautiful keyer project from K3NG. Now I hear what I keep. Pure nostalgia. Maybe I will be able to do my first QSO with it on QO100. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you.